Hello, and welcome to the final set of videos for chapter one. This is chapter 1.8, uh, and we are representing functions as graphs. And so the key thing here uh, that we should know by the end of the video, uh, in combination with 1.7s, is uh, you'll be able to represent functions in four different ways, as an equation, a graph, a table, and a verbal statement. So uh, let's just kind of like take a quick look at those four things. Um, the verbal rule uh, would be something that is uh, spoken in English, like I take a value, multiply by two, and add five, right? Um, some kind of statement. Uh, it could also be a story problem, uh, something w with context. Uh, all of these constitute a verbal rule. Uh, so. We've seen this in a couple different ways uh, in previous lessons, uh, whether it be a story problem or what. Uh, so that's our, our verbal rule. It's right. It's spoken. We have tables, uh, and we've definitely done tables in previous lessons. Uh, so it's when we have an x and a y with our domain in the numerator and our range in the denominator, right? And then whatever numbers are in between. Tables can take the form of something that is horizontal or vertical. It does not matter. As long as you uh, have it labeled appropriately, it's fine. Okay. <clears throat> we have equations. Equations are uh, something like that, right? Uh, where we have both an input variable in the x, and then we have an output variable in the y meaning that I can plug a value, substitute a value in for x to find the y value. And then finally, what we're going to uh, review today would be a graph. And a graph would be something that looks like this, that has an x-axis, and it has a y-axis, and that each of these uh, axi, axes have a, uh, points that we can find and that a point would be something that is both an x and a y value. And remember, it's just alphabetical order, right? The first number in a pairing is your x value. The second number in a pairing is your y value. So there isn't a, a special rule you need to remember here, right? Uh, it's x, y, and then in a point, it's x, y. So let's, let's do some problems here that... <clears throat> Uh, that have us doing that. So we're going to actually go between a couple of different forms here. So it's asking us to graph the function. And so eventually, we're going to be creating a graph uh, along here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, notice that we have this form of a function here, which is an equation. And we have the beginnings of a table, right? It says that the domain is 0, 2, 4, 5, 7. So I have the beginnings of a table uh, that I need to just finish, right? I have the domain of the table, and I need to find the range of the table. And I have to do this because I can't f put points on a graph if I don't have a y value. Uh, I, I know that the x equals 0 is going to be somewhere on this y-axis, but I don't know where until I find the y-value. I know that x equals 2 is here, but I don't know where to put it until, uh, put that on here until I have a value here to put it on. <clears throat> so we need to find the range before we can put these points in. So we're going to plug everything in, okay? Uh, x equals 0 is going to give us y equals 1 half times 0 which we know is 0. So 0, 0 is one point, which I can place right there. And then I've got x equals 2. And that's going to be y equals 1 half times 2. Now, uh, if you remember multiplying fractions here, right? Uh, a whole number we can always create as a fraction. And if we have a like, uh, excuse me, uh, on the diagonals, if we have things that are factors of each other, we can cancel. So that's 1 times 1, which is 1. So uh, we have 2, 1 as a point, right? Remember, my pairings here uh, are x value 2, y value 1. We've got x equals 4. And this is going to be y equals 1 half times 4. The other thing you could think of is what's 1 half of 4, right? That's what this says. This says what's 1 half of 4, and that's 2. 
we can also make it a fraction. That's a 1, that's a 2. So it's 2. So this is 4, 2. 4, 2. Yep. And continuing on, let's get the last two here. x equals 5, y equals 1 half times 5. Now we get this interesting uh, situation here, right? We can't cancel. So when we multiply, we multiply numerator to numerator and denominator to denominator. So this is 5 over 2. So we got 5 halves on this. And then 5 halves, we've got to figure out where that is. 5 halves as a decimal is going to be 2.5. So I'm going to come over here to 5, and then I'm going to go to 2.5. Because you can do decimals and fractions on graphs, right? 2.5 is between 2 and 3. It's 2.5 right there. And then finally, the last one, x equals 7. This is y equals 1 half times 7, or as we can see, would be 7 halves, also known as 3.5. So 2, 4, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 0.5, right there. So I have my graph, I or excuse me, I have my table, which is 7 halves there, and I have my equation, and I have a graph. And all of these represent the same function. They're just looking at it in a different form, right? I have an equation, a table, and a graph. The only thing we're missing here is a verbal statement. So we could say every time the x goes up by 1, the y goes up by 1 half. Or we could make some kind of story problem that is uh, like pencils cost 50 cents. Right there's my 0 0.5, 50 cents. Uh, if I spent $10, how many pencils did I buy? Find the x. Uh, so there's a variety of things that we can do there. All right, uh, I got to practice one of these for you to do on your notes. If you could uh, go run and do that for me, and uh, we'll do it together in our last video. See you in a moment.